The idea of identifying minimal residual disease in colorectal cancer is, is extremely exciting. And the majority of our patients, you know, now with the increased rise in young onset colorectal cancer, we're having a tremendous amount of patients that are still in the prime of their careers, um, de developing uh, or, or actually uh, uh, rearing young children, and so they don't want to have the impacts of traditional chemotherapy, uh, the neuropathy that we often, uh, that patients often experience with more traditional approaches. So offering novel immunotherapy combinations that are much more tolerable in this setting makes a whole lot of sense. The difficulty though is in a minimal, minimal residual disease setting or an MRD setting, um, when we find CTDNA positivity, we alert the patient of this, and this is an exciting thing to say, hey, we, we see cancer bef uh, microscopically before it actually develops on a scan, but what do we do about it? There's no standard of care in terms of what to do, and so there's a tremendous amount of research efforts to say, well, what is the best way to intercept this, uh, this, this finding? Um, and so that could be traditional chemotherapy, uh, that could be immunotherapy combinations, but this is all under the umbrella of, of clinical trials. None of this is standard of care. And so we have, we at MD Anderson, we have an intercept program that has a multiple array of, or a portfolio of clinical trials that are really kind of speaking to how to treat MRD for colorectal cancer patients after they've completed all of their stage three treatment and metastatectomy for, for, um, for liver or lung metastasis. And so it's, it's exciting because we have these clinical trials that are trying to answer the question. But having put a few patients on some of these protocols, we realize at the end of treatment, you know, if we do a um, say we, we offer a patient a trial for six months of therapy, you know, we're following CT DNA clearance rate. That's how a lot of these, these trials are being um, developed or designed. Um, and at the end of six months of therapy, we may have cleared patients, or we also end up finding some patients still have a low level of allele frequency picked up. And so what do we do for those patients? Do we move them on to another clinical trial, or do we um, put them on maintenance chemotherapy? There's just a lot of questions that still remain. And whether or not CT DNA clearance rate is an adequate um, surrogate for, all, for overall survival. That yet is still to be determined. And so I think it's exciting. You know, I'm putting patients from one MRD trial onto the next if they don't completely clear their CT DNA. But it's also pretty exciting to see the CT dyna dynamic changes where we're seeing high allele frequencies out of the gate with nothing on a, C on a CT scan and having this option for patients to do something very different, very cool, intercept the cancer and then change maybe the trajectory of their course, but the long-term data is still you know, being generated as we speak and whether or not we're um, making a difference in patients' outcomes or, or is yet to be determined. I think we are, um, but, uh, but it's, it's still a lot that, that remains to be, to be discovered.